Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Unfound podcast channel on YouTube. I am, of course, Unfound's host, Ed Denzel. I hope everybody is doing well out there. As the title suggests, this is going to be a part one of two videos that we will be using as supplementals to the podcast part one and two for the, the Colonial Parkway disappearances. Part one came out on December 16th, 2022, and part two came out on December 23rd, 2022. And in this first video, I'm just going to be covering items that were covered in part one of the podcast. In part two for next week, I will then do the same thing. I will go over whatever is discussed in that uh, part uh, on this video. And I'm telling you right now, that'll probably be a lot more intricate than this one is. And I'm sure it'll be a lot longer than this one is. Before, before I get into what I want to cover in this video, please uh, like this video if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel. I think we offer a lot of great content here. So please subscribe. And if you'd like to support Unfound and what we do here, hit the join button below. Thanks. I'm going to just go through the locations that were discussed in part one. There are what I would say are four major ones, but I think it's un uh, important to understand the uh, context of them, where they are, to start to get a firm grasp on these disappearances overall. And I realize there have been videos and maps and everything else that have been done over the years for the Colonial Parkway murders as a whole. But as you already know, in part one and part two, I'm just concentrating on the disappearances, although the murders do get discussed some in part two. So what you're looking at is the Newport News, Gloucester area of Virginia. You can see here Chesapeake Bay, uh, 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 Chesapeake Bay off to the east. We have the York River right here and the James River right here. And in fact, uh, in the interview, uh, I did refer to the York River as the James River. That was a mistake on my part. But I want to show you where Keith lived where Sandra lived, where they were going, and where the car ended up in general, just so you have a good idea of all of this. Up here is Gloucester, and yes, it is pronounced Gloucester. It's not Gloucester or Gloucester or anything like that. It's Gloucester. I want to make sure I pronounce it like the locals. This is where Keith lived. Down here in the Grafton area is where Sandra lived at home. Down here, in Newport News, I think Newport News, when I think Newport News, I think of the Navy, a lot of Navy ships, naval inst installation there is right here. And then where Keith's car, the approximate point, next week we will go to the exact point with uh, Street View. This is the approximate area where Keith's car was uh, later found. So just to go through all of this, how this night seemingly went... Keith's at home. He has this date with Sandra. They're going to go out for the first time. So what he does is he leaves his house. And as you heard his brother Chris say, Chris lived very close. This is a bridge right here going over the York River. Uh, Chris lived very close to the uh, bridge right in here. So Keith goes down here, stops here, asks Chris to buy him beer because... Uh, Keith is not old enough, and I did look that up. Um, the age was changed from 18 to 21 in Virginia and actually 1985. It was not at the beginning of 1988, as uh, Chris remembered. You have to remember this is uh, over 30 years ago, but actually they raised the drinking age from 18 to 21 in Virginia in 1985, so over three years before these disappearances occurred. But Keith is 20. He gets his brother Chris to buy him some beer. Chris says this is the first time that this has ever happened. So we have to think about that. First time Keith asks his brother Chris to do this. And that was the only older brother um, that Keith had. Uh, Joyce did not say he ever tried to get her to do that. 
but maybe Keith over time maybe knew other people who were over 21 that did this, but this is the first time that he ever asked his older brother Chris to do this. Might be significant, maybe not. But Keith, uh, Chris does as asked. Uh, Keith gets back in his car. He goes down to where Sandra lived, right in this area. As you heard Terry talk about her sister, she just happened to be there when Keith showed up. Picks her up. They go to the movie somewhere. It's still unknown. I did look up that some of the movies playing in the theaters at this uh, time are movies that we've all heard of. Beetlejuice had just come out. Big Lights, or is it Big... Uh, Big Nights, Bright City, or Big Nights, Bright City, the one, uh, the movie with Michael J. Fox. It was a big deal, of course, because uh, Back to the Future had just come out a few uh, years before that. He was a huge star at the time. Another movie that was out was that uh, kind of Armageddon end of times movie, The Seventh Sign, with uh, Demi Moore. Uh, was also in the theater. So just those movies had just come out right around that time. We don't know what movie they went to see, the two, uh, Keith and Sandra. So they did that, and then at least they said that's what they were doing. Uh, they were doing, of course, there's no proof that they actually went to the movies. Maybe we need to add that in. So they come over here to Christopher Newport College, which is right over in the, here in this area, and they are at this party for a while. You heard... Um, what uh, the three siblings had to say, their understandings about that night. Just in general, doesn't seem like uh, Sandra and Keith had a lot of interaction at this party for whatever reason. But here they are. There's dispute on what time they actually left this party with others by themselves, unknown at this point, even 34 years later. And presumably, Keith was going to be taking... Sandra home, I mean, she was going to get home eventually, right? If she, Of course, if they don't go missing. Instead, as you heard Chris say, and he'll, that'll get into part two, um, around 3.30 to 4 in the morning, he came, he was coming home, and he went by this area, and seemingly, he didn't realize necessarily that it was Keith's car, but Keith's car was found approximately right here, and we'll get more into that in part two. But this is where the car was eventually found. As you uh, heard in part one, um, their father would come down here over the bridge and then go up the Colonial Parkway to go to work. He actually stopped when he saw Keith's car there, took a look at it for a few minutes, and then continued on. Presumably, he got to work and started calling people, and that's what got all of this started. But what is important, I think, you need to recognize here is that surely the car being here, that is not on the way home. Uh, that whether Keith and Sandra ended up there or Keith by himself or Sandra by herself or somebody else, whatever you want to believe regarding these disappearances, this is well out of the way. And in fact, I will, you can see how close this is. According to the map, Grafton, um, from the college, maybe five or six miles, something like that. Maybe, maybe not even that, maybe 15, 20 minutes for her, uh, for him to take her home that night, whether she had a curfew of 2 a.m. Or, or, or whatever time. But I want to show you, I'm just going to knock out, um, the first two locations. I'm going to erase Gloucester and I'm going to erase Grafton and I want you to see how far this is actually away. It's like twice as far. It's, uh, it, it's on a highway, but it's 14 miles away, whereas this is where Sandra lived at the time. So well out of the way. And I think once uh, in part two, when I show you the actual little pull off where Keith's car was found and do a satellite view and a, and a street view, I think that, of course, is going to uh, give you a lot more to think about. But those are the locations that are mentioned in part one. I thought it was just important to show them to you, uh, going from Gloucester to, to Chris's place right here near the bridge right in this area, down to Grafton to pick Sandra up, down to Newport News. Christopher, you can uh, even see Christopher Newport. Uh, you can see the name right there. And then the car ends up 
way over here. Of course, in part two, I will also show you where the other murder sites locations are and how they relate to where Keith's car was. So that's it for video number one regarding the Colonial Parkway disappearances. Uh, another video will come out uh, next week, uh, right before the audio episode debuts for part two. So that's all I have, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon, like I said, next week. And please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and thank you for watching.